So now we've got the heat equation and we want to be able to solve a problem with it, right? We want to be able to uh, figure out what it, what's going to happen to a temperature field. So we're going to do that uh, analytically, that is with math. So here's our uh, equation here, but what do we use it? What's, what's the usefulness of it? Uh, the equation describes for us the factors over here um, that lead to a temperature change at a single point. Okay, so this describes what's happening at a single point. These factors here, this is the diffusion of, um, of thermal energy, right? The, the flux that moves through it because of temperature differences. This is the generation of thermal energy within that volume itself. Okay, so this says temperature will go up if the flux coming in is bigger than the flux going out, or if I've got a lot of generated heat in this uh, in this volume. In a real world problem, our solution, as we talked about last time, will take this form, okay, where we've got uh, the temperature field at every point, um, all the way uh, from our initial time to our final time. And we can find that solution uh, with math, analytically or numerically. And so we're going to start with analytical and then next time we'll take on numerical solutions. Okay, all of the terms in the heat equation, so we, we said that that equation describes what's happening at a point, at one small volume. They're all relative terms. In other words, they're based upon what's happening next to them. Okay, so the, the slope uh, at each boundary uh, in the diffusion term depends upon just the, the next neighbor of uh, that point. Uh, that's going to allow us, if we solve that, that'll give us a shape to our field. Uh, and what in calculus we call a general solution. We want to find a particular solution. Uh, in order to do that, you need boundary conditions. Okay, You need some assumed values at the surfaces uh, of our uh, field. Okay, so how many of those boundary conditions do we need? We'll take an example like this one, right? If our um, differential equation is first order, uh, the slope is equal to five, um, how many potential solutions do we have? A lot, right? We can, that just tells us the line with a slope of five is a solution uh, to that differential equation. Um, if we want to decide which of these four solutions is the correct solution, all we need is one boundary condition, right? If I say my initial temperature is 25, uh, then my solution, my particular solution has to be that red line. I have a unique solution um, to that differential equation. So first order differential equation, we need one boundary condition. Now remember, the heat equation is a second order differential equation. Uh, so let's think about a second order differential equation. Here, this tells us the curvature of the temperature field is 15 uh, degrees per meter squared. Um, that tells us a curvature, but again, it doesn't give, that's the general solution uh, that we can find the curve, um, but we don't know where that curve is. And in fact, we don't know two things about it. We don't know what its initial slope is, and we don't know where it's placed, right? So any of these six lines here could be possible solutions to this, right? They're in the family of solutions for that differential equation. Uh, so in order to place that, we need to know two BCs. Uh, we could know temperature here and the temperature here, since we know the curvature, there's only one line with that curvature that goes from here to there. So that would give us a particular solution. We could know what our slope is at x equals zero and what our temperature is at zero, okay? That would tell us too, like, oh, if I'm headed in this direction right there um, and I'm starting at this temperature, there's only one curve that's going to match those two things. So it can be a flux, it can be two fluxes, 
uh, it can be two temperatures or a flux and a temperature. All of those are going to turn a, a general solution into the particular solution that we want. And here's just a visualization of those temp and flux BCs. Uh, a temp BC tells us where what the temperature is at that boundary. Uh, the flux BC tells us what DT is, what our slope of the temperature field is uh, at that boundary. Okay, so the heat equation is first order in time, but second order in space. We said a first order needs one BC, a second order needs two. So for a unique solution of a 2D problem, uh, well, actually for any D problem, we need one boundary condition for time, because that's first order, and two boundary conditions for each spatial dimension. So in this case here, the problem that we show up here, we have temperature boundary, temperature boundary, temperature boundary, three of those, one flux boundary up here. So that's what a flux boundary looks like. Uh, and one initial condition uh, at time equals zero, where we define all of those uh, points in the temperature field. So that's five, uh, five, 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 five boundary conditions uh, for our 2D problem. So a 3D problem would need seven boundary conditions. Once we have those, then uh, our heat equation will give us a unique solution for the whole field and the whole time of that, um, of that simulation or that.